Ooh. Sledge. Hey, Ooh. listen. Wee. I apologize. I must have misread the memo. I thought we were coming. Smart casual. Apparently not. My bad, dude. <laughs> Hey, buddy, if you want to go smart casual, I will throw the blue light blockers on right now, my friend. Listen, let's this do this. Just, we're trying to squeeze this thing amongst other events. You know how it is. I tell you what, we are we are on the road, Sledge. We are out of the basements. We are live on the road. You got, obviously, the Atlanta broadcast going on. Yes, I'm out do. here in Kansas City. Why are you out there, Oz? 2014 ALCS reunion right here, baby. We're wow. celebrating second place. Don't love it. But if we're going to get all the boys together, then that's a reason to get all the boys together. I'm all about that. So oh, my goodness. We said we're out of the basement. Let's start there. So we, I took on the data gods on X a couple of days ago. So we talked about bat speed. There's a new measure of bat speed versus this versus that. And that's going to try and tell you how good a hitter is at the end of the day. But, of course, there's two big outliers, probably two of the best contact hitters in our game. So, Pete, what do we got here? What do we got here? I've gone into the numbers, and you know how, how much I love numbers. I've, I've dived big right numbers. in. I've dived right in. And I've come out with, I think hitting is hard. So, that's what it shows me. The other thing that I am worried about is that we saw a ton of guys change their whole off-season workouts, everything about what they do to get themselves prepared for a season, chasing that velocity swing because we saw a lot of guys that would get paid based off just that one specific metric. Is this going to be something now, the new hot thing that's going to force dudes out of their ordinary routines of the off season, absolutely trying to swing as hard as they can to get their swing speed up so that they might get paid? I feel like if, it's, if that's going to happen, there are going to be some obliques firing all over the place, man. The oblique gate, that's what you call it, the oblique gate. gate. That's what we're going with it. It's its just something that the metrics can't tell every piece of the story. I mean, at, at one point in time, you can learn a lot from the metrics, but you got to realize, man, hitting is a pitch-to-pitch -pitch adjustment. Hitting is a day-to-day -day type thing, at bat-to-at-bat, -bat, pitch to pitch like I just said. You have to understand that, one, you need experience to understand you can anticipate certain pitches. You got to have a mental approach. You got to know what pitches to go after, what pitches to lay off. You got to know what the pitcher's arsenal is. There's yeah. so much more to this. So I don't understand why, again, we are trying to pinpoint on a certain aspect of hitting to where at the end of the day, like we said, there's outliers. You got Lewis Arise, Stephen Kwan. These guys are some of the best contact hitters in the game. And I don't care that they don't have an 850 OPS. At the end of the day, when we're talking about playoff baseball and there's a guy on third, less than two outs, and you need contact, you need that yeah. run in, those are two guys I wanted to play for me, absolutely. Yeah. One thing that I thought that was crazy was the the spread of the swings and the different sizes of guys that were in those top eight, ten guys. You know, Acuna's in there, Judge is in there, Stanton's in there, these guys that are just totally different sizes all over the place. Soto's in there, so it doesn't have necessarily have to be these monsters anymore that – that you expect it from. There's guys that are generating a lot of power with just sheer, I guess, elasticity rather than the fewer strength. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to it's okay to not use everything you have in the tank. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're taking a controlled swing, a more controlled swing, you're going to see the ball better. Your head's going to be right on the ball. You're not going to go flying. To me, you're chasing something that leads to bad technique, and that's something that we do not want to do. And when we talk about this, chasing this, and making the adjustments, you know, there's a fine line between guys that have came up in the game, they've done things for a certain time or a long period of time, and now there's a lot of different things getting thrown at guys. And, and at the end of the day, it's almost like, do some of these guys, when they go through struggles, does that thought start to creep into your mind? It did for me. Like, hey, do I need to change something? Do I need right. to change something in my routine? Do I need to add this, take this away? What do I need to do? So a big guy before you go is, is Manny Machado. We're talking right. about Manny Machado today. I was on my flight out here to Kansas City, interacting on X. They want him to make some kind of swing adjustment out there in San Diego. To me, that's insane. The guy's got yeah. a track record. He's been doing this for a long time. The adjustments during season, you cannot make a big swing change during the season. To me, that's something you save for the offseason, and you really have time to work on it. Well, how much of that is just getting back to your base zero and if you don't know by feel what that is then you're going to be so constantly searching for it the crazy part is now that they're able to measure it but if it's just measurements that you're looking at we saw it with matt olsen this week right well for the last couple of weeks he's been struggling but when you look at the metrics when you look at the numbers he's still hitting the ball hard he's still 
absolutely smashing the baseball. He's hitting barrels like crazy. Exactly the same as last year. There's just he's not getting the same results as he was last year. So it's it's really hard without that feel to know what to adjust and when to adjust throughout the season. Yeah, and a good point someone brought up today on on Twitter on X. Mike Moustakas, he came up first couple of years in the big leagues. He was a dead pool hitter. Had some hot times, had some bad times. But at the end of 2014 or the 2013, Mike Moose literally looked at himself and said, I need to make an adjustment. I need to yep. take this four months in the offseason, make that adjustment. I'm going to go to Venezuela and get live at-bats during the winter. To me, that is when a big swing change, a big adjustment can't be made. During the season, there's too many flying parts, moving parts. Everything's happening so fast. And at the end of the day, as a hitter, you got to go in there and compete. You can't be worried about, you know, certain mechanics, certain things that lead a certain way. You're not going to be the best athlete you can possibly be when your head's filled with all that stuff. So let's dive into the pitching side, PETA. Well, here we are again. Someone got caught using some illegal substances on the glove, on the hand. But I will say this. Blanco in Houston is not the only person doing this. Pete, I'm going to let you go before I go ham on this. Look, I'm just going to just get it. Look, I don't know the circumstances behind this. Obviously, from reading about it and watching some some reviews of it, he had something in his glove hand or in his glove maybe that was sticky. That's apparently illegal. I will say that, you know, back in back in the time when I used to be on the mound pitching, I didn't say it. Uh, there was a time where I would get some sticky stuff and it would end up all over the place. So it's, you know, there's, I see how it could happen. But today's day and age, he'd already been checked a couple of times, I think, earlier in the game. So whether it was something that developed because of sweat, I'm not sure. I think it probably wasn't. And this is something that I now feel more comfortable talking about because there is, I would say, half and half when it comes to the pitching side of it. Half of these pitchers are upset that the other half are using some kind of substance to be a better pitcher, to have a better pitch, to have something along that lines that makes you improve at a tremendous amount. So for me, we have so much technology in today's game. I work with the Pitching Ninja every Wednesday on our BetCast. He can literally pull up the characteristics of a pitch within minutes, yep. seconds after the pitch is being thrown. So why can't we have some kind of technology, numbers, where something jumps out, where there's abnormal spin, the metrics, RPMs are at a, a rate where it is abnormal. That's a red flag. We then have four guys under the tunnel that are checking the replay stuff, that there's no back and forth going on there. Why can't we then notify them to check the hand, check the substance, all that? Pitchers out there, listen, this is something that's been going on for a long time. I understand the, the rosin. I understand the, the sweat, the sunscreen. That is stuff that has happened for all of time, and I'm all good with that. But I think we all know there's other substances being used. There's sprays. There's other things that are being used. So at the end of the day, if this is going to clean up our game, if we are going to clean up our game, I mean, my God, pitchers, let's go. Can we can we just do something, make some kind of adjustment? I will say, Eric, in Blanco's defense, the numbers didn't change. Now, does that tell me that they didn't find what he was doing early in the season. I doubt it. I'd like to think that this is just something that's come up because you're right. If it does change a guy from someone that can spin his curveball at 22 RPMs to 28 RPMs, that completely changes the dynamic of what pitcher you are. And you shouldn't be in the big leagues because you can't do it normally. Yes. And there's a lot of people that have gotten a lot of contracts, relievers especially, that have gotten that two, three-year deal based off of characteristics of this pitch. So at the end of the day, a tacky ball, in my opinion, is not going to fix this because at the end of the day, you can still use substance. So that's just going to add even more RPM or even more spin to it. So at the end of the day, like we keep saying, we have all these numbers, we have all these metrics. Can we just get somebody upstairs, read the numbers, flag somebody when you see something's going abnormally, way higher than usual, and boom, there we go. We just saved baseball, Pete, that a baby. We just need to find a solution, buddy. That's it. Yeah, we really do, man. This is something that uh, you and I are both passionate about. But speaking of saving baseball, potentially saving baseball and getting it back going again, Paul Skeen's out there in Pittsburgh, baby. Woo-wee! I watched this thing live. It was – obviously, the build-up was – they say, keep saying Strasbourg-like. It was – the only thing I remember being simple. Look, every, but the whole, every TV station was, was around Paul Skeen's. And rightfully so, when you see some of the numbers in AAA – 
I thought it was pretty impressive. You could see that there was definitely flashes of what he's going to be in three, four, maybe even five starts. The movement on that sweeper is you got swings from guys that were kind of crazy. And even the one that would start at the hitter, they're jumping at him so quick. And it's just, the stuff is there, unquestionable, obviously. So the future is bright. I just don't know what's going to end up happening with him and what's going to end up happening with that team. Is he going to be wasted for the next few years? Yeah, you certainly hope not. And and you talk about electric, man. That that game on Saturday, and I'm not going to lie. I was locked into every single pitch. Yeah. And then when they took him out in that fifth inning, I also won't lie, I turned the game right off. So I'm I part think, of the problem, I guess. <laughs> I, look, I, I did the same thing, obviously. but uh, And they obviously ran into a bit of trouble after that too. And that's what's been Pispo's problem. But Wild game. the excitement level itself, and then obviously having Livy done there at the same time, yeah, you know, she bring that 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 Taylor Swift element that that's starting to come around the game, which I think is cool. Baseball's missed on that. It's uh, it's always been football and basketball that seems to get all the all the publicity. It's time for us to get our flowers. Yeah, man, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. You know, get her on there, get her in the games, get her in the suite, get her what we got to do. But Paul Skeens, man, this guy from a mentality standpoint, like we talked about, the stuff. What really told me a big part of that story was seeing the bat, the at-bats the second and third time through. After, you know, big league hitters see your stuff one time, yeah. they can anticipate certain things. They can know they got to lay off certain things. But, man, those swings on the heater, you can tell that all the Cubbies were selling out heater because, man, that thing was getting in there hot. And every single breaking ball he bounced, you got that check swing where you knew you were anticipating heater. Here's the thing that I can say about witnessing a few of these over the years, right? When they come up, there is just something different about these kids when they first come in that you know that they're going to be fine at this level. Strasburg, it was like change up and movement on his off speeds pitch, but he also had a devastating fastball and his arm just seemed to move differently than everybody else that had come before him. It's the same with Skeens, you know, like the exercises that he does pregame, it's a lot of balance, a lot of strength. He's a massive, massive dude and he yeah. uses every bit of that size to his advantage and sits 102 like it's a comfortable throw. Unreal. Let me ask you this, Pete. You're out there yeah. working with Atlanta, working for the Braves right now. Can baseball do something like football as far as flexing a game to prime time or making Paul Skeens, when we got two, three days, knowing that he's coming up, making yeah. his debut? Is there any way possible to get that in prime time? I think it's not enough notice. I think with the amount of equipment and stuff that those games carry, you've got to organize broadcasts. You've got to organize all that sort of stuff on the fly. I think the best thing they, they could have done was what they did, which was almost like a simulcast. They played the Pittsburgh broadcast on MLB TV, I think. Uh, but apart from that, you, it's just not enough notice. I know that we get, especially Atlanta, because they're a pretty popular ticket item right now, we will get six to eight games that either Apple TV, Fox, uh, ESPN, Sunday Night Baseball, uh, Peacock, you know, whatever it is now that's going to take a national game, we will lose that broadcast and it'll be taken over by the national crew. But that only happens about maybe eight to 10 times if, if you're lucky. Yeah, to me, that's something. And like you said, the back end of that, the production side of that, I know that is very, very difficult, especially with baseball when you're playing every single day. But man, I, I just feel like baseball as a whole, if we can really dial in on certain matchups and get those games whether, like you said, it's the simulcast or however you say that, MLB Network picks it yeah. up, puts it on, but just for a way to get everybody watching. The other night, the Braves versus the Cubbies, Shota versus Lopez. I mean, these are two of the top pitchers in the game right now. Yeah. We need to see that game on national television. Well, this is this just speaks to a whole bigger issue when you're talking about the TV rights and, and how that's all going down these days. It's just it's uh it's a tough space because there's guys that have current TD TV deals that that want to be able to give you the game and they have uh, got contracts that are that are into the future. So what happens in the next couple of years is just anybody's guess, honestly. Yeah, it really is. And that's something that you look at the NFL. They just dropped now that they're going to have two games on Christmas on Netflix. They have hard knocks for the off season of yep. the New York Giants. So you can dial in on front office moves, the drafts, how that whole process goes. To me, there's nothing cooler. You get to see every aspect of the game. You get the yep. behind the scenes look. And you're dialed right in there, hearing all these conversations and how everything goes down. That's something that baseball. I know we got hard knocks coming out this year with Boston. Yeah. Again, I don't know why they picked Boston, but I think this is something that we need to continue to grow as a whole for our game. I think teams are getting smarter at it now too. I know the Braves have their own production where they go down to spring training, 
and it's called Behind the Braves. And they do this whole presentation throughout spring trading. And it's like those sounds and and I know you can't smell it, but you almost feel like you can with the way that they produce these things. It's all in high def. It's just different. We never, especially me back in, I'm not going to say it, especially me when I first started, uh, <laughs> that, you know, we, we didn't promote ourselves. We had to have 51% black in our uniform, in our shoes, because that was part of the team. Like it was just so structured. Couldn't wear a hat backwards. It was just the way that it was. It was team rules. It was old school. It was no beards. It was like I had to wear sleeves because of my tattoos half the time. Yeah. The fact that the game has changed in a positive way towards letting guys be their own brand, there can be some guys that need to pull up, I'll be honest, but guys needing their own brand, I get it. But it's just, it's it's a move in the right direction, that's for sure. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, there there's a lot of things that you can't be back and forth like we talked about. So if we're going to grow the game, if we're trying to make this entertaining, if we're trying to do certain things, yeah. then we need stuff like that. The guy out in Minnesota, Duran, the closer, that Doss. is one of the coolest entrances I've ever seen for a closer. Yeah, I mean, if I'm at the game with Jack and it's a possible save situation in the fifth or sixth inning, we're sitting there staying the whole game hoping, man, I hope this guy comes in so we can see that entrance. Yeah, And then he would go to school the next day talking to all of his friends about it. So to me, that's a plus. But you're right. There is some things where... You hit a home run, the back goes flying, all of a sudden it's off the net, would have went seven rows deep. That's where we get a little carried away with this stuff at the same time. <laughs> I mean, in my humble opinion. What about, I mean, you talk about entrances. What about what it's going to be like for Mason Miller when he gets to do an entrance in front of fans? Like, can you imagine? <laughs> so what is he, about three, four years away from that? Or what, what do we got? Is he going to get traded? What's the deal here? He has come on, not out of nowhere, obviously, but just two pitch mix, fastball slider, but it's devastating. Remember Blake Trainin when he's like Blake oh, yeah. Trainin now all the way by his back and he's disgusting again with the with the X's just middle of the plate and just devastatingly goes either way you want it to go. He's a little different, but it's just high ride fastball, big breaking ball. It's disgusting. But there's talks of him not even being around for when they do get to Vegas because of what they could get for him with what he's doing right now. It's crazy to even think about that. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what they do. So you might as well give someone him for six, seven years of control, get back whatever you can get back, and then yeah. start the rebuild, all that type of thing. Speaking of, we're out here in Kansas City. What I love so much about Kansas City right now is, yeah. yes, you can do both at the same time. You can try and win baseball games at the big league level while you're also building up your farm system. Yeah. Goddamn, Pete, who would have thunk it? What a what an offseason they had. They went out and they chased – couple of veteran guys. Seth Lugo might be the best pitcher on the planet right now. They spent a little bit of money like him. He got and he looks like a bargain right now. Michael Wacker's last couple of starts have been really, really good. They've got a bona fide superstar like we spoke to in yeah. Bobby Witt. And Sal, yeah. Sal is like hitting 340, dude. It's not like Sal's yeah. at, the, at the end of his career and he's just holding on. He's raking. He is absolutely raking. And we just released the Salvador Perez digging deep episode. And like we said, wow, this dude, I mean, you He's would have beautiful. thought back then he is. He did a great job too. Like you said, he was nervous about coming on. Yeah. He was nervous about talking for a while. Absolutely oh. nailed it. Absolutely crushed it. But this is something that we covered in the episode. People always said, Salvi, you got to stop catching 140, 150 games a year. You're going to hurt yourself. It's not going to be good on the longevity on the, on the back end of that. And look at this dude now. He hasn't slowed down a bit. Matter of fact, he gets Animal. better and better each year. Every single year. It's so fun to watch him go. And that episode is do yourselves a favor. If you haven't watched any so far, this is the one to watch. It's going to get you emotional. It talks about the different relationships in this game that you're going to find that you don't always think you're going to find. And it's just why I love it, why I could come back. All right, Sledge. That's another right. week. You get out there. You tell the world go. what Braves Country is all about. And I we're going to be out here in Kansas City enjoying this reunion, pal. Hey, have fun out there, my friend. And hey, I cannot wait to hear all the stories. My man. Cheap out. <laughs>